Kia ora and welcome to this NZSM Composition Screen Lab, Setting Sibelius Defaults. In this lab we'll be looking at how to set up Sibelius to help make your scores look more legible and professional, as well as meet the page layout guidelines in the NZSM Guide to Music Notation. Firstly, it's important that you thoroughly read the information contained in the first six pages of the Guide to Music Notation, as they cover the most fundamental information that you'll need to lay out your scores. If you don't own a copy of this guide, you can download it from the NZSM website. Go to nzsm.ac.nz, then click on Study and Careers, then choose Student Support and Resources, then choose Information and Resources, and scroll all the way down to the bottom. At the bottom you'll find the section entitled NZSM Composition and Orchestration Style Guide with a link to the PDF. Secondly, it's important to remember why professionalism in notation is so important. Take a look at the page on the left. The music is all over the place, it's very hard to read, and looks like a complete mess on the page. And now look at the music on the right. Although the music on the right is probably a bit more difficult than the one on the left, a pianist will be much more willing to put time and effort into that piece because it is well notated and easy to read. So your goal is to make your music easily readable by a performer in a concert situation. That doesn't necessarily mean easy to play, but it does mean that your score should have a clear layout with bars and systems well balanced and the music easy to read. In addition to it being well laid out, you also have to think about how the musician will play your music. For instance, think about the fact that your music will sit on a music stand which is usually between 70 centimetres to 1 metre away from the performer's eyes depending on the instrument. This means that getting the right staff side is important. Too small and the performer won't be able to read it, but too big and you won't be able to fit many bars on the page, making a lot of unnecessary page turns. In this screen lab I'll be suggesting some good staff sizes for you. Also, most players cannot play and turn the page at the same time, so if your music is more than two pages long, you need to think about page turns for performers as well. And here, thanks to the wonders of YouTube, is how not to do page turns. Ok, so let's now look at how to set the defaults in Sibelius. When you first open Sibelius, you'll be presented with the Quick Start menu window. In this window are contained a number of templates for common ensembles. It's a good idea to use these templates if you can, because they're set up with the correct staff order, which often differs from the default orchestral staff order, as well as having default clef choices and transpositions, so you don't have to sort these out yourself. For example, in this video I'm going to choose the Brass Quintet template. Once you've clicked the template you want to choose, you'll be taken to this screen. Now leave the house style as unchanged for the moment, but eventually we'll create our own style. Scroll down to choose your starting time signature. Please don't use the old-fashioned common time or cut time. Instead just use 4-4 four, four, or 2-2 two, two, respectively. If your score has a pickup bar, click it here. Also type in a tempo indication such as Adagio. Always choose a metronome marking and don't just choose the default of 100. Think about what tempo your music is at first. Here I'm choosing crotchet equals 56. Under key signatures, think about whether or not your music is in a key. Much contemporary music is not written in a specific key. If this is the case, choose no key signature option. Finally, give your piece a title. Enter your name, preferably in capital letters. A copyright message. And if it's a major assignment, click Create Title Page. OK, so now we have a basic score, but it's actually not that great at the moment. Some of Sibelius's defaults don't result in an entirely professional looking score, 
Before we go and fix that up, let's just clear up some terminology. Firstly, each line on a score is called a staff. A group of staves is called a system. You can see on this professionally published score how the staves and systems sit nicely on the page. No staves feel too close or too far away from the other staves. This brings us to spacing. There are a number of options for how we size and space our music. Firstly, there is the staff size itself. Music staves are usually sized between 4.5 to 6.5 millimeters. For a conductor score, we might choose a smaller staff size of around 4.5 mils, whereas for an orchestral part, we might choose one around 6.5 mils. Next, there's the margins between the music and the edge of the page. These margins are typically set between 0.5 to 1.5 centimeters. Next, there's the spacing between the staves or the staff spacing. This is usually set to a value around 120 to 150% that of the staff size, which for a normal ensemble score will usually work out between 7 to 9 millimeters. Finally, there's the system spacing. This must be noticeably larger than the staff spacing, and we usually set this to a value of about 200 to 300% that of the staff size, which for a normal ensemble score would be somewhere between 12 to 15 mils. OK, so let's set up our layout in Sibelius. On page 5 of the NCSM Guide to Music Notation, there's a list of common staff sizes. In this screencast, we're working on a brass quintet, so we should start with a staff size somewhere between 5.3 to 5.8 mils. Let's choose the midpoint of 5.6 mils. So let's return to Sibelius now. Click on the Layout tab. Then click on the little arrow in the bottom right hand corner of the document setup section. This opens the document setup window. I'm going to flick to page 2 so we can see the effect our changes have on the layout. First let's change the staff size to 5.6 mils. Now we want left and right page margins to be the same with margins of 15 at the top, 12 on the left, 12 on the right and 8 on the bottom. Now let's flick to staff margins. We'll set these to 25 at the top, 5 at the bottom, and then for page 2 onwards, set these to 8 and 5. We also want to change the default name spacing to full names 15, short names 5, no names 2. Notice, however, that that pushes the names over to the left, so we'll change full names to 30, and that looks much better now. Click OK. Here we are, it's better already, but we now need to change the spacing between staves and systems, as they're a little tight at the moment. Go up to the staff spacing section, which is at the top, and enter a staff spacing of 7, and a system spacing of 15. You are most likely going to have to tweak these depending on your particular situation, but you can see how much better the score layout looks already. Next we're going to change some other settings. We're going to change some textiles now. Go to the text tab and click the triangle on the format section. The default is Plantin, which is fine, but many music publishers just stick with the default of Times New Roman. So I'm going to change to that. Some other changes to make. Bring up the Edit Textile box, scroll down to Tuplets, click on Tuplets, and choose Edit. Change this to Times New Roman, Italic, and click OK. Now click on the Title Style, Edit. and change the vertical position to snap to top or bottom of page 0 millimeters from the top margin. OK. Now scroll up to the composer style, edit. This time we're going to change the font size and score to 10 
and imparts to 9 point. Click on the vertical position again and change this to snap to top or bottom of page, change to 10 mils. From top margin, OK. OK, we're mostly there. A few more things we need to change. Go to the Appearance tab and click on Engraving Rules. Here we need to make the following changes. In Accidental and Dots, tick Prefer Top Accidental at Right and untick Restate Accidental when note is tied across a system break. Go to Articulation, click on Center All on Stem and click Always Allow Always Above Articulations to be flipped below. Go to Beams and Stems, click Beam Over Rests and Break Secondary Beam. Go to Clefs and Key Signatures, check Reset Accidentals to Current Key Signature on Clef Change. Go to Instruments, uncheck Draw Left Separator. Go to Lines, change the small aperture value to 1 and the large aperture value to 1.5. Go to Staves. Check Justify both staves of Grand Staff Instruments. And change the staff line width to 0.13. Finally, go to Time Signatures and change the gap before Time Signatures to 0.41. Nearly there, just one more thing to do. The default Sibelius Glissando line is horrible, so we're going to change it. Click on the Notations tab and click the small arrow in the Lines section. Scroll down under Staff Lines until you see the word Gliss. Here is the default Glissando, which is totally non-standard, so let's fix that. Click Edit. Change the width to 0.2 spaces to make it a bit thicker. Then click on the centered text and delete the word Gliss. Click OK. Now we've made all the adjustments we need to. We can save this as a house style, which we can then apply whenever we create a new score. To do this, go to the Appearance tab and choose House Style Export and give it a name. I'm going to call it NZSM. Now whenever we create a new score, we will have the option of choosing our NZSM house style with all the correct defaults applied right from the outset. And that's it for today's Screen Lab. There are of course many more layout tips and tweaks you'll need to make as you come to lay out the bars and systems, but that's another topic for another time.